Unfortunately, the Wubats are on a bit of a tough run. The last two weeks have seen costly mistakes push us out of the playoffs and into a fight for the postseason. This week is a battle that I've been looking forward to since the beginning of the season. We are facing Draco and the Terror Dark Tyrants. This is no easy task. The Tyrants have threats upon threats in the roster. Ogapon Halfblade, Iron Boulder, Sneasler, Azumarill. The addition of Gothitelle has added even more support to the already stacked squad. I deliberated long and hard over this one. Ultimately, I went for fun. With Follow Me a possibility on Ogapon, it's tough to lead Whimsape. But that has to go in the back pocket for Game 2 or Game 3. With his love of Substitute Boulder and the addition of Shadow Tag Gothitelle, I feel like Monkey Dorian lead is a safe play. But I want fun. So I dug into the Monkey's move pool. Found a very interesting combination. Nasty Pot, Baton Pass. Take out and Sludge Bomb, a standard moves, Focus Sash, and the Monkey is good to go. But what special attacker can we pass the button to? A quick look at the Tyrant's type chart, and you'll notice it weaknesses to Dark with only two resists, and only one immunity and one resist to Dragon. Hmm. We have a mod that is both of those things. Hydragon. Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse, as good stab. Terror Electric plus Levitate means no weaknesses. And Terror Blast to get rid of that pesky Azumarill. Oh, and a Life Orb for extra damage. With Hydragon being on the slower side and wanting to keep up the Whimsate Ruse, we need the Cotton Puff. Standard Tailwind plus Beat Up. Charm to help versus all those physical attackers and Giga Drain because Grassy Terrain will let us get some extra health back if we ever get to click it. EV to live an Air Slash from Neuvern at around 35% so we don't necessarily die in one turn. A very standard bulk up leftovers. 118 lets us outspeed Gothitelle naturally and then everything under Tailwind. No real calcs in the rest of this set, it's just balanced and bloody bulky. We have an all-out attack Ogapon this week. I've had to go jolly to match the potential for that on Draco's side, so I just went max max. We're actually running U-turn instead of spiky shield. There aren't many things on Draco's side that will outspeed and do massive damage to Pon, so U-Turn might give us the chance to get a cheeky stack on Rage Fist and pivot out into something that'll take a potential hit better than the pawn, keeping our sturdy intact. If Wims proves not to be the play, we have a booster speed Sandy Shocks that can play speed control with Electro Webs. Ideally, I wouldn't want to use this. But if we need the extra damage, the shocks is there. The whole idea though is if his lead allows it, we get up a nasty plot with Monkey and pass that to Hydrogon to deal massive damage to absolutely everything. The only real threat to Serb is his Azu. So with Tailwind and a plus two, we should be able to brute force our way through everything. Well, this is a little embarrassing. No audio recorded for this entire battle. Which, when you see said battle, is a real fucking shame. So, enjoy a Ronin-less match and likely an Echo-less match. And I'll see you all for some post battle retrospectives.
Well, that battle just about sums up my season. More mistakes and terrible luck costing me absolutely everything. That crit on Hydragon cost me the entire match. As you can see, without it, close combat does 37% max. And thanks to the Spadef drop, Dragon Pulse Oko Sneezer. We end that turn with a low health Hydragon in Tailwind and he has Thwacky, Azumarill and Spiritomb remaining. From there, the game plays out very, very differently. Whether I win, I don't know, but I'm in a far better position and he has to think twice about terroring that Azumarill. With all the priority spam, it wasn't going to be easy, but I can switch around, keep Hydragon safe, chip down the Azu, and the whole game becomes much easier to manage. I'm also then way less tilted going into game two, even if I do lose, giving me a chance to turn it around. I'm honestly done. We can mathematically still make playoffs, but with the way things are, I'll just lose to Weens anyway. And even if I did somehow scrape a win, I'd only lose in round one of playoffs. So between burnout and frustration, it's just not worth it. So I forfeited my week nine match and put myself out of my misery. The Wubat season is over. It's game, man. It's just so painful when you make all the right plays, but still lose the hacks. I'll be back with a full season review. When I've calmed down a little bit. So keep an eye out for that. And I'll see you all very soon.